All right, in today's video, we are going to take this Amazon fuel system kit and put it into this steel blower. We're going to give it a bit of a review and see if it's all it's cracked up to be. Everybody had a good holiday. Phil here. Phil's flipping adventures in Nashville. Uh, today we're going to try to uh, fix up this blower we got out of a uh, storage unit. Um, it's a BG46 steel blower, handheld blower. When I got it, I was like excited because I was actually needing a blower for fall cleanup. And when I went to put some gas in it, I tried to push the primer bulb in here to prime the gas, and it crumpled in my hands. I figured no problem. I ran down to uh, Tractor Supply, grabbed up a little universal kit with, that had some uh, primer bulbs in it, threw one in there, and it didn't pump up very well. Turns out the grommet that goes through the tank down inside is all blown out as well. Uh, fuel deteriorates stuff nowadays, so we're going to see if we can fix it. I got looking for some parts and on Amazon for just a few more dollars in that grommet in the tank, I was able to buy this whole kit. Uh, I believe this was just under $25. Get a new carburetor, get the grommet as you can see it's kind of specialized so it was fairly expensive uh, air filter spark plug new primer bulb and some gaskets in there we're going to uh, basically give this thing a review and see if it works uh, I don't know if this is original equipment this is the package more than likely it's not it's probably some knockoff version of original so let's get into it and see what we can do. All right, it looks fairly simple tools wise. I believe these screws are T27 Torx. I don't have one of those, but a 25 seems to be working. Probably should have put a bit on my impact. But we'll go old school today. Just going to remove the blower shroud and the air cleaner for now. Hopefully we can get it apart from there. Um, I'm going to try not to fast forward through anything and just do this real time. Right in front of your eyes. That's a plastic screw. The other ones are machine screws. So make sure we put those back in the right place. Everything seems to be coming out okay, that's good. Guess that's it. Whole cord looks like it's been replaced recently. Uh, I was hoping some of this stuff would be out of the way. As you can see, still got a little bit of intrusions. Let's take the uh, air filter off here. And there was a new air filter in the kit as well. I don't know if anybody saw that in the bottom of the box. So that's good. All 
looks like I might have to jump up and grab a socket. Hold on. I had everything I needed in my little pile of tools here on my tinkering table here. Uh, this is, I did have an 8mm, but it was a 3H drive, and this is a very tight area, so it's 8mm on a quarter inch nut driver. Okay, that was fairly tight. I did blow this off with air a little bit before I started the video just to get some of the gunk out of the way. So if it looks clean, it's pretty much because I sprayed it with a little brake cleaner in here and cleaned it up a little bit. Just to be correct. Um, so we've got the throttle linkage coming in here from the top. Let's see if we can get it with a pair of needle nose. Actually, that came out pretty easily. There was no real force in it. Um, so there's where we're at. Here's the grommet that is all blown out of the tank, as you can see. It's all deteriorated, which is why I had fuel leaking everywhere when I went to start it. Um, Throttle linkage is right here. Just popped it out of the little arm on the carburetor. If you can see that, but that was nothing serious. Well, let's hope that this carburetor slides back enough on these studs. Get these fuel lines off. Maybe not. The closest one seems to be the one for the primer bulb return, so you can't overpressurize it. both lines off the grommet. Let's see if this slides off. I'm hoping, otherwise it's going to make for a crappy video. Anybody who does this for a living probably already knows if it does or not.
That is so close. It's got to come out of there. This is just got to hold your tongue right. Um, this little piece looks like it comes off there. Alright, that's the old carburetor. I notice the stud's kind of loose. Well, they both are. I guess they're just not threaded in. Um, I'm going to take a look inside the throat here and see if we can see any damage to the piston. Make sure it was not run out of oil or anything like that. It looks pretty decent. Piston looks to be in good shape. So, I don't know if I can actually get it on camera. But we're looking somewhere over here down in this hole right here and I just spun the flywheel by hand kinda look down inside there and see what the piston looked like if it looks all scored and burnt up that's not really good for a two-stroke engine uh, probably kinda junk I felt like this had pretty decent compression when I was pulling on it so I wasn't too worried about that in all honesty before spending the $23 or whatever I spent on the carb kit, I probably should have looked at that. And I really didn't know I was going to make a video out of this. I have some content in the works. And just got to get a few more things done until I can make the videos. So the fuel filter does not look like it's attached to the bottom of the grommet and lines so that was just kind of wandering around that's interesting uh, well that didn't come out too hard so there that was the culprit I'm going to try and wipe this tank off a little bit without knocking anything inside All right, I don't know if you can see that real well, but that's where the grommet goes. Uh, I do want to kind of keep track of our clocking a little bit here when we put it in, um, just because these lines have to line up with places on the carburetor. I kind of took note of where it was when I took it out. So as you can see, it goes in from the top, and there's a little register groove right here that it fits in the tank. See how hard that is to get in there. Doesn't help when you have hands the size of a catcher's mitt. coarsen it a little bit with a screwdriver, flat screwdriver here. Try to get it started. I started the back in first so I can try to work the front down in there. Trying not to tear the rubber at all so we have no leakage. So I'm just softly pushing it into the edge. If you actually do this from this video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Hopefully if anybody tries this or uses this kit or if it works out, you'll leave a good comment that it was helpful to you. In all honesty, I don't even know if it's going to work yet, so let's see. Alright, I'm just going to... Give it a little push down. It looks like it's all seated in there well. Um, 
probably should have put the new fuel filter on there before I stuck it in the tank. Somebody should have yelled that out to me. Not too bad though, you can get at it. It's done. Let's see how difficult it is to squirm this thing back in there. And to, I know, you guys are yelling right now, put the gasket on. Alright, comes with two gaskets. They both relatively look the same, except for one of them looks very generic. But I'm going to go with this is the back one because it has the pulse port right here. If you see that, make sure that those line up. That's what gives you your fuel pump pressure pulse to uh, run the fuel pump that's inside the carburetor. Um, when your piston goes up and down, it gives a positive and negative pressure, which runs a little flapper pump inside this carburetor. Well, on this particular machine, the, uh, I'll give you, a, I'll show you. Hopefully, you can see it. Closest to the body right there, you can see a little groove in the plastic block. That's the pulse port right there. So we want to make sure that this little hole over here is over that pulse port. Or you're going to be very disappointed in this job. Alright, that appears to fit okay. Even though it's not the same as the original gasket, it does the original thing. Alright, let's see if this guy fits back in there. Oh. go with somebody in steel engineering had way too much faith in tolerances and mechanics again I guess like coming out I gotta hold my tongue right Sorry if that scared anybody. That look is what I'm thinking right now. Okay. All right, well, if there's a different way to do this other than taking it all apart, you could certainly leave a comment. So that everybody could benefit from it. Now I seem to be hooked up in there. Somehow. The throttle arm, the throttle linkage arm, seems to be kind of not in the right area. 
do this conveniently. Oh, there we go, we're starting. if you can see this very well but where the throttle arm is up in here it rubs against this plastic which was making it really difficult uh, I put it I mean not a lot of pressure a little fair amount of pressure to kind of get it started onto the studs and we're headed in that direction so I don't think anything was harmed in the getting it there um, I'm try to just hold on to it. There we go. All right, so I just put a slight amount of pressure down on that throttle arm. Now we got to get this back in. Slide the carburetor forward a little. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but we need to get that down in the arm. Without bending anything or forcing it, I'm just going to try to coerce it a little bit. With just a little bit of forward pressure. There, that was it. It didn't take much. It didn't take much, and that's what it does right there. All right, let's get our fuel lines on. So the one in the back goes to the pulse port area. The fuel pump pulls that up. Again, a very uh, good place for somebody with really big hands. Just lightly grabbing this fuel line and helping it on there, kind of being my fingers for me. I don't want to pinch it too hard or break it or rip it, so I'm not being real aggressive with it. All right. I don't know if you can see that down in there, but it's on the port. This guy comes around here. I'm going to go with this probably is an original equipment. It's very stiff. Or it's been around for a while. That's why they made up these kits. All right, so both lines are on, as you can see. I'm not going to push this one up anymore. All right, everything seems to be working. Lines are on. Double check the grommet. Looks good. Uh, second gasket. Probably not a good place for it on the table. Um, the second gasket has this hole up here, which corresponds with a hole in the carburetor right there. So we'll make sure that that gets put over that. And you don't have to worry about the pulse port on this air filter gasket. Alright, I'll wipe off back of this a little bit, make sure we don't get any dirt in there.
This part could prove to be a little bit of a challenge. Again, I need the hands of a two-year-old to do this. Or a magnetic nut driver would be handy. But we're going to use what we got sitting on the table here. Some of the points of some of my videos is really just to explain to you, you don't need to have $50,000 toolbox to do some of these repairs yourself. Now while we're trying to get this on here, I'm going to explain some of the carburetor adjustments. I did notice on this particular air filter, it does actually tell you what uh, what your initial adjustment should be. Um, you have three adjustments on here. You have the carburetor or the engine idle speed, which is when you don't have your hand on the trigger, like how fast it runs. Um, then you have the idle adjustment, and you have the high speed adjustment. I believe... Now this doesn't appear to have block offs, but some some newer machinery don't even give you the adjustability to them. They just have to be super clean and ready to rock. Um, the carbureted engine is kind of a dying breed. Um, we should spray a little oil on this, but for the sake of getting it running, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, So the new air filter doesn't quite fit. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's slightly bigger than the old one. Probably going to take a little coercion to get it in there. Uh, it's slightly thicker as well. Uh, may not work all together. We'll see. Um, for the sake of getting it running. Get a little air here. Blow off the old one. All right, so we were talking about carburetor adjustments. Um, so they're right here, and your idle is down in here. Um, so it's saying a preset should be one turn out from seated. So there's a half, one, half, kind of hard to tell where seated is on this, kind of tough. I'm going to go with a seated. So I'm going to go a little over one because it's a little cold out. And then three quarters. So that's one and a half, two, two and a half. So a little over three quarter. I'd always like to go fatter than leaner. So the way this works, we get the idle mixture set first. We want to get the thing to idle. If you pull the trigger and it goes bleh. And just dies it's probably not getting enough fuel you just open that an eighth of a turn the high side the low side bleeds into the high side when you're when you're adjusting this and when it's running so it's important the low side's working before you get the high side working because you can get it to run great on the high side and let off the throttle and it dies um, so you want to get it so it'll just idle and run first then adjust the high side now the high side, you want to fatten it up or counterclockwise turn it until it starts to stutter. Then you want to turn it in, this is with it at full throttle, turn it in until it races up really too much. And then you want to find a sweet spot in the middle. Um, 
when it's racing too much, it's too lean. When it's counterclockwise out too much, it's too rich. You want to find the sweet spot in the middle of those. So let's put some gas in this thing. I'm just going to put the cover back on. I'll probably fast forward through some of this just to not bore you guys to death with all this. Keep in mind one of these screws is different. And I believe it was this guy over here. Because it goes into plastic. Now anytime you use a plastic screw, you want to turn it backwards until it kind of drops into the original uh, hole. Otherwise you'll start another whole set of threads. And eventually, if you have to take it apart, for some reason it's not like in life. Um, probably because it's in the wrong spot. Apparently, it goes up here. Everybody makes mistakes. So, I'm going to turn it backwards. All right, right there, it dropped in. We'll do it again. Right there, it dropped in. Then you turn forward and see how smoothly it goes in. I'm not cutting new threads. I'm on the old threads. Hopefully we're able to pick that up on video. Just a little tip. Uh, full disclosure, I was a small engine mechanic for a long time. Um, haven't done it in over 20 years. I was a young guy and still working for the man, collecting a paycheck. I worked for a small engine facility up in Maine. I had some really brilliant mechanics up there. I learned a lot. I was very fortunate to work under some extremely smart people that were willing to share their knowledge. I did attain my Briggs Master Service Technician uh, certificate and a lot of that knowledge is what led to a lot of our success in lawnmower racing over the years. Okay, I'll put a little gas in this thing. Does take 50 to 1 mix gas. If anybody's wondering. Not going to put a ton in here. Basically, want to make sure it primes up right now. So we have a fresh empty carburetor. We're gonna one, two, three, four, four of them. Four pumps. I got a little bit of fuel into the carburetor. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't have to worry about overpressure in it because it will just dump back into the tank. Um, just wanted to make sure everything was in there. All right, we're on choke, switches in, see what happens. All right, that was on choke, folks. All right, so it started and died. Uh, it's going to get really smoky in my garage if I keep running it. Uh, it started and died. It means I'm probably a little lean on my uh, low side. So we're going to go ahead and give it a little turn. Out. 
counterclockwise, give it a little bit more fuel. Uh, I'm going to reset this all up outside and go outside and we'll see if we can get this thing running. Check back with you in a minute. All right, we're back outside here. Got screwdriver, got the blower. I'll give it just one pump on the primer, put the choke back on because we ran it out of fuel. Put the screwdriver in my pocket so I'll stab myself while I'm trying to pull the cord. Still running out of fuel. We want counterclockwise a quarter turn on the low idle circuit. That's the one that says L1 on it here. One is just a recommendation, it's not necessarily where it's got to be. Choke it, prime it again. I was holding it wide open right there and it was stumbling and struggling to stay running so I'm gonna give the high remember we said the lower bleeds into the high so I'm gonna give the high just a little bit more fuel all right so it's still not idle and we're gonna crank the idle screw up a little bit that's the one down inside the body right here, there's a hole. I'm gonna give it a little bit of idle. I'm gonna put the screwdriver in my hand with the grip, because if I'm pulling the cord, I don't wanna have the screwdriver in my hand and hit myself somewhere with it. Likewise, I don't wanna stab myself in the leg pointing backwards, so. I'm going to point it forward and still have my finger on the trigger. I'm going to put the choke back on, give it one squirt on the primer. Right. Still not liking life, so we'll go out some more. It's very possible we're out too much. Give it a little more. Alright. Alright, so I did idle a little bit there, so we, we were headed the right direction. We were going counterclockwise with the low screw giving it more and more fuel each time uh, and it did stay running so it ran out of fuel so we're going to choke it just going to see if it'll idle Oh, oh, oh. 
goes right out. Oh. On off switch works, that seems to be good. We're gonna put it back on and we're gonna see now that it's warm, just see if it pulls, starts with just a little tug. Oh. bad, my hand was on the throttle. Try it again, get my hand off the throttle. So no choke, just warmed up, just a little tug on the rope. That's what you want right there. All right. I'm gonna go with a $23 fuel system kit from Amazon. Pretty much a success. Uh, Digging it wasn't too hard, be honest. The adjustments right out of the box were probably pretty close to what I ended up to be in. Uh, if they're not, at least you got some idea, I hope, of which direction to head if you need to make some changes. Um, you have to play around with that air filter, see if that works. Uh, on all honesty, I don't have a ton of money invested in this thing, so if it doesn't work, the old one's fine. Um, Otherwise, I'm thrilled. It was like $17, $18 for that grommet and the fuel tank. And I think for another $5, I got new carburetor, gasket, spark plug, which we didn't even put the spark plug in. Um, this one looks like it's probably the original one. So, uh, again, thanks for checking out Phil's Flipping Adventures in Nashville. Like I said, we got some more stuff coming up. Um, sorry it's such a long video, but I did take you start to finish in real time. Uh, you should be able to do this yourself in under an hour. Um, I didn't know what I was going to run into other than my table full of tinkering tools there. And uh, Like I said, I think it's a 27T27 Torx bit. 8mm socket and a pair of needle nose pliers and a small flat screwdriver is what I used in this whole job. So, we'll catch you on the next one over and out.